Hi, my name is Jamie. I'm a freewheeler. Welcome to Film Night 2023. We have done a lot of films over this year. There is a drama about a drug dealer with a, a disabled drug dealer. We've done a sports film. We've got a documentary done by a freewheeler. And we've got uh, a story written by a friend of mine who is doing around Hansel and Gretel. There's quite a lot of other films coming out, and hopefully you enjoy it all. So let's start the films. Miguel. Hey. Gun number seven. And and You are under arrest, finally. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention, when questioned, something you may need to rely on later in court. Take him away. With pleasure. It's all right, darling. You don't need to worry about money anymore. Biggie's got lots of money and the house is in my name. So we're all okay. Not, not worried anymore? Not worried, never, never. Excellent. So we can go in and show him all that lovely shopping we did. I'll get the bags and the boot. Bye bag. I'm always in it. Hope Dad doesn't mind me spent all his money. Oh. Hi, honey. Yeah, How are you? Did uh, you have fun? Yeah. We had a wonderful time. Bought Cara this gorgeous jumper. Huh? It's cashmere. And uh, she got some new shoes. And um, oh, a little pair of shoes for me too. You bet my money again. Oh, well, don't worry about that. I think we've got a little something for Dad, haven't we? Is it in your pack? I'm sure I'll find it for you, don't worry. Come on, darling, let's try our things on. Well, it's better more from you. I've been, I've, I've been trying, Biggie. I'm sorry, I, I just can't find the people to use, to use it. Um, I don't know as many people as I used to do. And I don't know that many younger people now. I think they find it easier to, to sell it. Um, I'm sorry, I, I've got a little bit of money for you. Um, I could give you now. Uh, 
I've got 60 quid. I know, I know. And, and there'll be more coming, alright? I will take the bound from the time being. Thank you, Biggie. I'll, I'll try and do better. Yeah. Unbelievable. We have... Biggie is out of jail. We have Bonnie in jail. The evidence is questionable. How can we get the right way round? This police station is amazingly... <clears throat> out of touch of its of powers. The, when we had Bonnie, it was unbelievable that we could get anything done, even though she was... Wow. Well, I would say more politely corrupted because of personal family stuff. Ah. Which, obviously, you were aware of, more or less. But so, now we got... Now we're trying to get just a Biggie into Mr. jail. Tate. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Tate. And his official, uh, his proper t t title for surname, but his nickname. His, I don't think it's his nickname, but it's difficult. Uh, so I just can't believe that this job is getting harder to do. And uh, I've had to get him somehow. My film, but my life. I, I hope you enjoy it. Billy Colt, Billy Colt. The first out first, I am a big fan of the TV. I did that after my daddy died. I hear your daddy was in the movie. Was he in, in the films at films? Yeah. But after my dad died, I started feeling this. Don't go for disabled people. What was it, Queen Elizabeth Foundation? Yeah. Yes. Um. Before I go in, people saw me crying and said, "Come in, come in here. We can do you up here. Come in, drama to the seats. I love it. I love feeling this. It gave me my or my dad. My dad is in my mind, but to give a mile of it. You got my dad in there, not. So, what was your first performance? First that performance? Um, I think it's the point, I think. Was it the point? I played, I played a dog in it. Were you playing a dog in it? Yes. Yes. So, did you, what would you, what did you think when you first went on stage? Were you excited, nervous, bit scary? Nervous, bit nervous, beginning. Oh. I'm get. So yeah, I'm alright. So your confidence is is. Uh, but you, every that... time I have a Caesar, you always there holding my hands and stuff. Well, that's right. We're there to support each other, aren't we? Yes. Make help each other through. Yes. If you said to someone, if you had a performance and you were standing next to someone who's never done performance, what would you say to them? I would hold a hand and say, "You'll be all right. it would be fine." So what do you like about? What's your favourite thing? Acting? Or dancing. 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 Yeah. What 
what's your favourite thing? Dancing. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm not doing drama anymore. I want to work with serious with people who have cancer. Cool. So this is your you're doing that as well. Well, I, I am doing meet and greet first, then if you like me, I'll work with kids. Cool. You're looking forward to working with the children. I am looking forward to it. Yes. So what will you, if you get a chance to work with the children? What will you do? What's a duty with them and what? Read a book. They have a, help us have a dog like Fossey there. Yeah. And then uh, I could learn a book. Yeah. I've got some stories in my head. Some I've got three bigs and stuff in my yeah, head. Yeah, and you could do a bit of acting using it with your voice. Yes. Yes. So you have a lot of confidence to do all of this still because you went to three wheelers. Yes. Cool. So what do you live? Still live in Dorincourt? No. Where do you live now? I live in in Sutton. Well done. Well done. Chop, chop. Legs up, Sonus. Legs up, legs up. Undo my legs up. Under my pinny. Well done. You see that? Yeah. Well done. That's it. Can you touch your toes? Touch your toes. That's it. Touch the other toe. And the other toe. Can you do a star jump? No. No? What can you do then? What else can you do? Peter's in the uh, kitchen doing press-ups on his chair. <laughs> Come film me. Uh, let me try and get him. Yes. Yeah. With Peter. Do you have it? Uh, is it an independent flat? Indep or? In independent living. Independent living? Yeah. Cool. Do you like all that work? Oh, do you like living independent? I live with three men. Three men? Oh, gosh, poor you. <laughs> yes. So, do you enjoy all the all this coming to three wheelers? And... Yes, I do. You, you raised me up, that's right. And we filmed that, didn't we? And that's yes. a lovely, lovely dance. And we feel like in Dumbass. We did, we filmed that at the Nomad Theatre at the time, didn't we? And we still got yeah. that. The, that's really a lovely, it's uh, stood the test of time. That, yeah, that, yeah. It's still very yeah. popular, isn't it? And we're yeah. we showing a lot even now. Yeah, it is. We were in one of my favourite day of the week. And I am me other people in my life, and I feel like I am able to do. And I am no more burden and and I and a lot of fun in my in my Hi. This is a documentary about me and a couple of freewheelers about our sports journey uh, through Spencer Special Olympics. You'll get to meet some of the guys that are Special Olympians, like Anthony, Will, Poppy, and me. If I ever have a bad day, I can just go for a swim. Go to the pool. Like when my mum was going for cancer treatment and she was going through bad moments and I couldn't, I felt helpless. I just went into the pool and just dealt with it. So like when my mum, when my mum died the week, the day after, I went for a swim and I let all my rage out in the pool. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Jamie and I am a freewheeler and I am wanting to become a Special Olympian GB swimmer. My name is Ryan Cottrell. I'm the Special Olympics athlete, silver, silver, and so on. What sport? Uh, golf and skiing. Anthony is a member of the Special Olympics, and then they are the PE Paralympics, and then they're the regular Olympics, which everyone follows it's for every four years, and the Paralympics, which come right after the, the Games, come right after the um, normal Olympics. And then every four years, there's the special, there are the Special Olympics, which are for people with learning disabilities. The Special Olympics is all about uh, uh, special needs and Down syndrome and mental health issues. You can pick any sport you can compete, Pete's well. Oh, uh, it's, it's your favourite sport. Pick one and you do it for Special Olympics. Now, Special Olympics was started, oh, how many years ago? Probably 50 years ago. I, I should have looked that up so I could tell you that for sure. But it was started in America by the daughter of President Kennedy. His daughter, Eunice, Eunice Kennedy Shriver, started Special Olympics because her sister had special needs, had some uh, um, disability, and was not able to participate in any sports in the school she went to. So she, because of her sister, one of Kennedy's daughters started the Special Olympics group so that she could be recognized as an athlete just like anybody can be recognized as an athlete. In 1998, I started to go horse riding for the disability in the RDA. I was started doing Special Olympics swimming three years after lockdown. I wanted to just lose weight and then I got inspired to just do swimming. I thought I'd do it as a join it up as a club and then afterwards I made the decision to just well me and my club talking masters um me and Jazz Jazz is the coach of her talking masters uh made it uh we're trying to see if we could do for see if I could do the Paralympics Paralympic is like um um it's car hot sport or today and the Special Olympics, so people with special needs and mental health issues and Down syndrome as well. So Most people think that when you say Special Olympics. They say, oh, yes, I know about the Paralympics. And it is different. Mm. It's a different category. There are three Olympics. So we're looking for the Paralympic, of, you know, the things that you get for that. And I didn't fit any of the criteria because I don't have spina bifida, I don't have all these other things, I don't have cerebral palsy, I don't have all these different types of conditions. 2004, and I went on a holiday horse riding camp, camp down in Downs in Wiltshire, and there you had. You had your own pony, you grew to you tapped, you like basically set, set your horses up and you go riding. Me and Jazz went down to Reading to see the Reading coat, uh, Reading Siglets. And I uh, tried out for their, their team and I did very well. So I am now with the Redden Signets and I haven't started my first ever competition because there's, funny enough, if if there wasn't a COVID, I, there would have been a, a World Games for the GB and we would have found out if I would have made it for that team. There's no so I got, uh, it's my second place in my golf division and and I, I won a second place, uh, and that's why I won my 
silver in, in the form um, Abu Dhabi Summer Games. So Anthony, these were your medals from the, let's take them out of the plastic, that would look better, wouldn't it? These are from the, well, we'll call them the county, the region, mm. yes, it's the region medals. <laughs> You won a, what did you win? A bronze and a silver? This one is the writing for um, the Sylvia Silver Silver Award. And then his very special medals that she has is Anthony was chosen to represent Great Britain in the World Games yeah. in uh, 2017, 2017, yeah. which were they were held in Austria. Yeah. And these are, can I hold those up? He won in the um, World Games, he won a bronze medal and a silver medal. I went horse riding pretty much for all my school life. I went horse riding. And again, it was a similar setup where at the end of every year there was a big what, picnic in the park where you go riding. So it was really fun. You join Special Olympics. When you join, they train you. Mm. So you don't have to go through any training to be a member of Special Olympics. Mm. But then as you get gain experience and you have to attend mm. so many national games mm. before you can be chosen to represent your country yeah. in the world. Yeah. Yes. And they have different divisions yeah. of different abilities and different age groups. Yeah. And um, so it, for Anthony, he joined Special Olympics probably about 15 years ago, yeah. you know, 15, 16 years yeah. ago. And he had been skiing with the Special Olympics about 10 years before he was chosen to go to the yeah, World Games. Yeah, yeah. But some people join and they do really well. They're very experienced. There's no set time. Yeah. For my sport, uh, for skiing, in, um, it, they are on dry side quite a few times and, and sometimes on, on snow. Uh, for golf, it's, well, it's a summer sport as well, that's on, on, on a golf course as well. Oh, so um, it's quite fun to do. I train seven times a week. Seven, so seven times a week. I only have one day off, and that is a Saturday. I go for a certain amount of walking, but the rest of the time I'm swimming. So Sunday I swim, Monday I swim, Tuesday I swim twice, because I do. I get. A bit of a, I'm a bit of a lazy person. I, I, I can't get out of bed. The only way for me to get out of bed is I have to go for a swim. And then I'm out the house and then I could go for a swim and then I could come to three wheelers. And he trains. They train for four years to be able to go to the World Games, yeah. just like the Olympians do yeah. in the regular Olympics. Yeah. 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 And Anthony's training this Sunday. He's going to Brentwood yeah. for his... A Special Olympics training session. They sp they train once a month. Yeah. I could do without the fins. I could do a mile in thirty eight minutes. Without no, with that's with fins. Without fins, it takes about forty minutes. So. I'm trying to ma maximize my time so so I can do 20 minutes swimming. So, yeah. I remember I, I used to struggle just doing swimming. I used to struggle just doing four lengths three years ago. Now I could just do them flat out. So they choose people from Scotland, Wales and England to represent Great Britain. So Anthony was representing Great Britain. So his, he's been to France and to Austria because most of the training and everything is done in England mm. and the nationals, of course, are done in England. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, sometimes we're like uh, one day I, uh, we go to these uh, 
he, he actually knows us quite a few times, and he, and then one person can pick you and say, yeah, I have him, her, him, her. Uh, I think Jamie will be, be the delicate one, can go to Special Olympics. The next World Special Olympics game, World Games, is held next month. And all the teams have been decided and I have to wait three years for my next to represent England again. So I am going to be doing, I've decided to myself that I'm going to go for every competition, even if it's able-bodied or against a Special Olympics, I'm going to try and get a good qualifying time and try and raise up my opportunity. So I might do next year, I was thinking about doing the Brighton to Brighton Pier. So that's like four... 15k, that's 15 kilometers, that's like 5k. I might do that because my disability, I can't really do running, I can't do gym, I can't do most things, but my body can manage being in the pool. Do a lot of downhill skiing. Yeah. They, he, um, he, they have a, a coach and they go and they just train on a dry ski slope. Of course, there's no snow. Here. So they go to the dry ski slope yeah. and um, train for an hour, no, two hours, yeah. once a month. Yeah. Yeah. And they they train in the slalom and downhill, yeah. which are two kinds of ski, alpine ski yeah. racing. Yeah. And uh, so these medals are from the slalom and the downhill. Yeah. I'm very dedicated to this sport because I want to get it right. Because if you don't do it, if you can't, do, if you're going to do it, well, the, co the, the, club for, the club have explained it to me that if I don't, if I do it once a week, every week, I won't, won't, won't progress. But if I do it three or four times in a week, I'll get faster. And I'm noticing it. I'm noticing it, starting to notice it now. It's a shame because I think the idea that to me and meant by, I think that stopped. A couple of years ago, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. I want to be recognised. Yeah, how would you like to be? Yes, you'd like to be an athlete, <laughs> yeah. not necessarily a special athlete, <laughs> but an athlete alongside all the other athletes. <laughs> yes, yeah. and you are, I think. <laughs> yes, in the Special Olympics. I think the sports, the Special Olympics, well, there's a lot of people that do a lot of hard work, but none of them get noticed for what they do. And I think it's, it's, I, I think it's unfair that I want to help, I want, I want to be the best so then I could help other people for when I do my swimming. Do more more sports to to do more sports Easy. to do more sports yeah. no matter what your disability yeah. no matter what your level yeah. do sports yeah. yes to do more sports yes. it's meant a lot to anthony yeah. one time anthony said to me you remember anthony he said to me my life would be very different if i had not joined special olympics yes. I got a smile on my face when I come to Wheeler's. So, Alice, hmm? what is this film called? Hans and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel. Story begins with Tommy's rumbling. Little Hans and Gretel hadn't had any food. Mm, we're very hungry. Hans and Gretel heard their mean stepmother whisper to their father. Get rid of the children, then we'll have enough to eat. If we get rid of the children. Oh, okay. Children were sad and hungry. Boo-hoo. Next day, children were taken to the woods. Soon, far from home. But Hans was clever. I have a plan. Let's try the crumbs to leave them home. But little birds eating all the bread. Tweet tweet. Before long, it got dark. Has and Gretel made look like he's them all. 
There are strange noises in the woods. The children are too scared, hungry, get to sleepy. Twit woo! Hoot twit woo! Well, what's that? It was a lovely owl. Next day, Hans Gretel wandered in the woods. To the kind of funny looking house. It's made of sweets. So the old woman came out the house. It ain't in my house. Sorry, we didn't know it was your house. We are very hungry. I'll give you ham and jam, said the old woman. The old woman gave Hans and Gretel a big supper and sent them to bed. But Gretel heard the old woman cackling to herself. She was really a witch, and she had wicked plans. <laughs> I'll feed the boy to make him big and fat. I'll eat him up. The next day, the old witch locked Hansel in the cage, <gasps> which gave Hans a lot of food. Yeah, <laughs> that was clever. The witch could not see well. Gretel gave Hans an old bone. He returned the wuzzy's finger. One day the old witch couldn't wait any longer. Fat or not, Hans would be in a dinner. But the oven isn't hot yet. Nonsense, said the witch. She opened the oven quick as a flash. Girl pushed in and closed the door. The end of the witch. Hans and Grail escaped from the witch's house. Can you guess who was looking for them? Children's father found them in the woods. He took them home, gave them a big teddy hug, sent mean stepmother away. They lived happily ever after. Betty went all my friends and enjoy. What I like to be a man, a man, a man, a man, a man, a man, a Oh, this is so nice, all here together. Mm. You're right, darling? Yeah. I think it's your go. Cara? Sunny? Mm. What's Sunny? I seem to think that it's a drug. And now I think about it, Priagon? Those are names of drugs. Yeah. How do you know that word, Cara? I just do. Is it your friends? Do we need to talk to your friends' parents? Or did she hear it from you, Biggie? No. Are you sure she hasn't heard it from you? Uh, I am not. No, I'm very worried. I'm very worried, Cara. I don't think it's funny. Mm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think you need to talk to her about this. Code black. Code black. I can't come into the office. I'm leaving now. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs>
Somebody's phone's busy tonight. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of messages. <laughs> I thought we were having a fun in the evening. Oh my goodness. Oh God. You're going to a party. Lots of boys. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what, what's this about party favours? Do you know what that means? Uh, special sweets? Mm. What's all this about? Why is this party? Is this your message? No. You're going to a party? I don't understand. You know what I mean? Where is that happening? Ah. Ah. Hello, Mr. Tate. How are you? I am fine. Good. It's a bit of a surprise for me to be here, isn't it? Well, there's been a uh, report about a very noisy party a few days ago that obviously went well and all things good and things, but there was a bit of an issue regarding, um, yes, drugs uh, at the party. No. I went to a party, but uh, I did a normal party. There's also been a report door on saying that uh, your daughter was there at the party. My, my daughter is sensible. Yes, of course she's sensible, I know, but there's a bit of a concern, though, where you have parties and drugs together. That's a bit of a concern, don't you think? No. But you, with your reputation? No. Well, if your reputation as a drug dealer and uh, and any other things on the side. Well, uh, 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 <laughs> business owner. Yeah. That's an interesting title for someone who's got a bit on the side. Work-wise. Sadly, no, but I could possibly arrest your stepdaughter. My daughter. She's innocent. Of course, she's innocent until proven guilty. Yes, of course. But. I can still charge her regardless because of drugs in the area. And also, I can question her. Welcome. My name is Carl Newman and I work at Free Wheelers and I'm also a painter. This is my calendar for 2023. So these are my paintings, and I, all of the paintings in this calendar, or nearly all of them, were pictures that I showed at the exhibition. These are all um, paintings made with oil, oil paintings. Some of them are quite big as well. These are, these are big paintings. They're all of the same kind of scene. They're all of this freight um, trains, um, and they're all in the north of Sweden, um, which is uh, a place I know well, because my mum was Swedish, and she. this is the town that she... 
um, came from, where she was born and where she grew up and where she went to school. And the town is called Ånge, and it's in the middle of, the middle of Sweden in the north. Um, and um, there's not much to say about Ånge other than the fact it's got a very big rail station because all of the freight trains come through the mid- through this town because it's in the middle of the Sweden. So you've got um, iron ore from the north of Sweden and there's lots and lots of forest forests in Sweden. So all of the timber from the forest comes through this railway station on these on these trucks. And in this particular painting, you can see this yellow... Um, I don't know what they're called, but the, the, the sort of yellow bits and, these, and so the logs are rest... Um, rest against these yellow things to stop them from, you know, spilling out and tipping onto the tracks. And there's, these freight trains are often really, really long, and uh, so they take vast amounts of timber from the forest to the to rest of Europe. So the chairs that we sit on and the tables that we eat from are very often made from wood from the north of Sweden, from these forests, and it all comes through this railway station. So there's a, so lots of people who live in the town work at the railway station on the on the freight trains they're tra- train drivers or op- signal operators or what have you so i got i became interested in this as a subject matter i like the idea of the rail tracks connecting places and people and i myself um when i was growing up would go and visit my grandparents in sweden and often we would arrive by train so for me it's a feeling of connection between here and visiting my grandparents in Sweden. Were you born in Sweden? Uh, no, I was born in England. I was born, I was born in Woking, quite close by. But my mum and dad got married in Sweden. So my mum was Swedish and my dad was English. And they decided to settle over here. And so I've always lived here. I don't speak Swedish very well uh, at all. Um, but I love, I love going back. I love visiting. And what was good about this... <laughs> showing these paintings was I was able to, I made the paintings here in my little studio um, and then I rolled them all up, took them over on a, on the, uh, over where we visited in the summer and I stretched them all, all up again, uh, ready for the exhibition and then I showed them. And what was lovely for me was that the, the people who uh, work in the, um, at the railway station, the train drivers all came to see the exhibition. One man came, just literally as we were putting the paintings up on the wall, and he came and he saw this painting and he said, this, this building, I've, I've worked in this building for the last 20 years. So there are people that um, had worked in the, for the railways uh, for a long time and knew. And he was trying to work out whose car that was. So it wasn't his, it was someone else's. We normally go to visit Sweden in the summertime. As you know, Sweden's a cold country in the winter. It's snowy there right now. And, uh, much colder than it is here. But we go in the summer. In the summer, it can be very bright and sunny and hot as well. And you often get, um, well, you always get swallows visiting in the summer. So you hear them, uh, the distinctive whistles and the distinctive call. And um, you see them flying very quickly um, whenever you whenever you're visit. And so it's part of the feature of the landscape is to have these, these swallows darting about all the time so uh, but they're migratory which means that in the summertime they're here when it's warm and when it gets cold in the winter they're they, sensible men they are sensible <laughs> they head south to where it's warmer so um, and i like that I like the idea of painting swallows because rail rail train railway trains have to follow the railway tracks don't they otherwise you have a disaster but the birds can fly wherever they want so there's a sort of contrast between birds flying free and going wherever they want and having to follow tracks. The king has given me permission to form a new government. I look forward to becoming your new prime minister. My name is Nikki. 
My friend David is the person speaking to you now. I enjoy coming to Fibula's music, especially when David is here. We often speak to each other on Messenger too, but I have few words. But my hopes and feelings are many and profound. Pictures are one of my making my connection to the people and the places that are so special to me. Here are some of them. <laughs> you love my best mate. Lovely Katie. Mm. Take one. Take one. Action. Um, I think Free Willies is great because it is full of happy smiling faces. Every time you come in there is a friendly face ready to greet you and it makes you feel very good.
even when you're feeling a bit down, you automatically feel uplifted by all the lovely people around you. I also think it's great because we make some amazing productions and films for everybody to enjoy and we spread that positivity and happiness out to lots of people. Come on, we'll do that. I know, I know she would. I know. And she won't do Come on again. My, I, my name's Anna, my friend. What's <laughs> 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 uh, Anthony? That thing? Best thing for three wheelers, Anthony, talking. Go on. <laughs> What's the guy about Anthony? Take one. <laughs> Sit up. <laughs> say it again. Okay. Please say it again, Alice. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> say it again, Alice. What's the great about thingy me jig? One day you'll get this right. I know. <laughs> Uh, Pete talking about Biggie. Pete talking about Biggie, yeah. Take one. Action. Uh, action. What's the great about thing we take? Hmm. Take one. Action. Uh, uh, uh.